Roll call. Alderman Strelchuk. Here. Alderman Pouquet. Here. Alderman Meyer. Here. Alderman Lashinsky. Here. Alderman Garrell. Here. Alderman Hawkins. Here. Alderman Nurbin. Here. Alderman Adams. Here. Mayor Abendroth. Here. We have a quorum. The first item on our agenda is recognition of outgoing Alderman John Lashinsky from District 4. And we have a proclamation for John, and I will read this. So, um, whereas Mr. John Lashinsky served as a citizen member of the Planning Commission from 2011 to 2013, prior to being elected in April of 2013 to the City of Mequon Common Council, and whereas John Alderman Lashinsky served diligently for three years, accepting assignment to various common council standing committees, including public safety, public works, finance personnel, as well as the park board and library board that furthered the interests of the citizens of the city of Mequon. And whereas Alderman Lezinski served as an instrumental leader in countless projects, including but not limited to the development of the Mequon Town Center, continued investment towards improving local roads and construction of a new combined public works facility. And whereas Alderman Lezinski gave unselfishly of his time and fulfilled his responsibilities to fellow citizens in a most professional, responsible, and caring way, and was instrumental in promoting the fair treatment of all individuals who live, work, visit, or do business in the city of Mequon. And whereas Alderman Lashinsky consistently served the best interests of the city of Mequon and its residents through a detailed, objective, and deliberate evaluation of issues in his role as alderman in furtherance of his commitment to maintaining the quality of life in Mequon. Now, therefore, be it resolved that on behalf of all the citizens of the city of Mequon, the Common Council extends their heartfelt thanks to citizen Lashinsky that they send their best wishes to John and his wife, Laura, so that they may continue their life adventures and that today, April 19th, 2016, be proclaimed John Lashinsky Day <laughs> I didn't know that was in here. <laughs> in recognition of the generous contributions John has made to the well-being of this city, signed on this 19th day of April 2016 by the mayor, and we all appreciate you, John. Thank you very much for all you've done. Isn't that sweet? Thanks so much. Okay. We also have a plaque which you can hang on your wall and be proud of for the rest of your life. <laughs> we have a card that you get. And I don't I can't believe they actually did this, but they fit your name on a street sign. Oh boy. Love it. The driveway. <laughs> Not that, it's a street I just like that it has two Z's in it. I think that's great. <laughs> Mike is mine. I'll say goodbye. <clears throat> I will. First, I want to I wanna start by congratulating Dan and Rob. I think this last election, the voters' message was clear, and that is Mequon is not broken. Far from it. <clears throat> In my fourth district, we elected John Worth. John's a class act, and he'll reassume his seat next to his old buddy here, bringing with him tremendous experience. <clears throat> we will be in very capable hands. Congratulations and good luck to Alderman John Worth. <clears throat> I also want to send out a thank you to Jeanette Braverman, who also ran in the 4th District. She decided to become involved in the process, and I wish more people would do the same. I hope Jeanette stays involved with the city. She'd be an outstanding choice for any of our community-run boards. <clears throat> she ran with a fresh new energy, and she has a very valuable skill set, and she ran a positive campaign, and, and I think that speaks volumes. Uh, thank you, Jeanette Braverman, for running. <clears throat> Being part of the city council has been a learning experience and most of the time a real joy. <clears throat> Over the past six years, I've served as planning commissioner 
and an alderman, and I feel Mequon is in good hands and definitely going in the right direction. I'd like to take this opportunity to say what a pleasure and honor it's been to serve the folks in the 4th District and also to serve with this council. I think every council member here acts according to what they believe is in the best interests of the city of Mequon, and I think it's a real pleasant change of pace from our national political discourse. Folks get along real well here, and it's been a pleasure to work with this council. <clears throat> I also want to thank the city staff. <clears throat> they come to all the meetings prepared and knowledgeable about the issues of the day. They, more than most, are responsible for Mequon being such a great city to live in. So uh, I thank them for all their guidance over the years, and <clears throat> I wish them well, and I hope they keep up the good work. I leave with one request. I'd like to suggest to the council that they take a fresh look at the park budget. Our parks are a reflection of our community. And for the past year, I've been the council's liaison to the park board. So I've seen firsthand the budget crisis. We really haven't allocated enough funds for <clears throat> general maintenance, much less capital improvements. Most of the recent capital improvements have done, been done by private donors, which is it's an, been an awesome partnership. The baseball fields and the dugouts and the gold posts. But we have a dedicated group of volunteers on the park board who should be discussing meaningful and effective growth, but without a budget, their services and their time are mostly rendered useless. So. I think it's time a structured approach to the park budget. I, I think it's time that we have a structured approach to the park budget and a capital improvement fund for our parks. And I'd appreciate your consideration on this one item. <clears throat> I don't want you to worry. I know I've been a man of very few words on this council. I'm not about to change that tonight. I just again want to thank the folks in the fourth district. It's been a real honor and a pleasure to serve. Uh, I wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you, John. So the next item is oath of office. Go down here. Okay. Start with me. So I was wondering, was there any makeup things? I, Dan Avendroth, having been elected to the office of mayor, having been elected to the office of mayor, swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States, swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin, and the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin, and will faithfully and impartially, and will faithfully and impartially discharge the duties of said office, discharge the duties of said office. The best of my ability, so help me God. Thank you very much. Hopefully, my wife saw the kiss. Would you like me next?
a Robert J. Strelchak. Having been elected to the office of Alderman District 1, swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin, and I will faithfully and impartially discharge the duties of said office to the best of my abilities, so help me God. Thank you. Got his Mountain Dews. <laughs> It'll be waiting for you. It'll be waiting for you. I can swear on a minute. I, John Worth, having been elected to the office of Alderman District 4, swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin, and will faithfully and impartially discharge the duties of said office to the best of my ability, so help me God. going to move on to uh, nominations for Common Council President, Alderman Bouquet. I would just like to ask the question, is it policy or simply tradition that this council generally nominates and elects um, a new president every year? Or is it acceptable to nominate someone who has been our president for the past year? I think it's tradition to pass the job around, but there's no requirements. Well, I think Andrew Nerman has served this council really well as our president this past year. I think that he stepped up and, and explained publicly decisions that people had not been spending a lot of time reviewing or hearing about before they um, read misinformation. And for that reason, I would like to nominate uh, Andrew this evening. Thank you. We don't, we don't need a second, do we? Full well knowing that it may not get a second, but second. I think he determines. Second. Nominations don't need a second. Okay, we don't need seconds for the nominations. Okay. Are there any other nominations? Alderman Nurbin. I'd like to nominate Rob Strelchak. Okay. Are there any other nominations? I'll nominate Dale Meyer. Okay. We have Alderman Nurbin, Alderman Strelchak, and Alderman Meyer. Are there any other nominations? What about me? Okay. We will pass out uh, ballots and you will vote. You will write the name on those ballots and send them in. Oh, we even said. Secret, secret. Oh, I was going to write all three names down. You and me, we have three names Can we do write ins? I guess you can.
Your Honor, how does this work? Is it majority? I mean, like the most votes wins, or do they need a majority of council? Or I think you need five votes, right? I know Donald Trump's probably worried about this too. <laughs> he's, got the, he's got the super delegates locked up. <laughs> I would think it's uh, I'm not sure if there's a specific mech one code provision i'm just double checking that as we speak um by and large it's the majority uh would uh take the place in the case where you have three nominations arguably if nobody got a majority of those votes you would take the top two and then vote again um, so so the majority votes so if it was like a three a, 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 like a four a two and a two the four would get it that's not oh, a majority run off no, no, he said the most votes, not majority. 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 Right, the, the, the majority of the five, council. We need the, the, the bulk of the quorum okay. that is present. Okay, we have, you want to do this? Okay. Um, Dale Meyer, three votes, Andrew Nurbin, two votes, and Robert Strelchek, three votes. So we're going to have to do this again, Let's which again. is not new. Hey, we have five votes for Alderman Strelchek. Wow. Congratulations, Alderman Strelchek. All right, the next item on our agenda is Planning Commission Aldermanic Representative Appointments, okay. nominated by the Common Council President. Do you want to go in sequential order, Planning Commission first, and then? Yeah, Planning Commission, and then um, Economic Development, Library, et cetera. Okay. Then we actually have to go into a committee of the whole for the rest of it. Okay. Um, Planning Commission, my recommendation is Alderman Adams. Oh, awesome. Chaired with myself for Planning Commission. We did really well the, uh, the last year and, and worked well together, uh, got to discuss both sides of several issues and, and came to some pretty strong consensus. I think we served well together. Economic development, um, I went a little off tradition on this one, I'm hoping that the recommendation is acceptable. I think with the town center and some of the concern with the town center having as much uh, aldermanic representation on the economic development board it would be critical moving forward. Um, I have uh, recommended to appoint Alderman Adams to economic development. Uh, Alderman Worth would be alternate number one, and Alderman Pouquet would be alderman number two, all three of which, anytime you can attend meetings, would be appreciated, uh, especially with Town Center uh, being a, a, a very important discussion for the, the upcoming future. Park Board, um, I am recommending Alderman Girl and uh, myself as an alternate. Library board, I am recommending Alderman Hawkins and Alderman Pouquet as an alternate. Mr. Mayor, would you like to move to standing committees? Mm -hmm. um, no. Okay. We have to approve those 
um, the, the Common Council has to approve those. So we have Planning Commission, Economic Development, Library Board, and Park Board. Correct. We need a motion to approve. Motion. Move approval. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Okay, those appointments are made. We will now convene as a committee of the whole to nominate and confirm standing committee assignments. And we will defer to President Strzelczyk. Uh, let's start with finance and personnel. Uh, I'm recommending Alderman Nurbin. Uh, I would enjoy another term on that as well, so I'm in there. And Alderman Worth. Public safety, I'm recommending Alderman Hawkins, Alderman Nurbin, and Alderman Pouquet. Public welfare, I'm recommending Alderman Girl, Alderman Meyer, and Alderman Worth. In public works, I'm recommending Alderman Adams, Alderman Meyer, and Alderman Pouquet. Looking for a second. motion. Pardon? I was seconding his motion. His motion, if there is one. Is there a motion? Wasn't that his motion? That's his motion, That's so his I was motion. seconding it. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? And that is approved. Another item on our agenda is discussion regarding council. Common Council meeting times. I'll defer to the City Administrator. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Members of the Common Council, uh, in the past uh, there has been some discussion, albeit limited, uh, regarding the possibility of starting Common Council meetings at 7 o'clock. Uh, so we figured we'd put it on the organizational meeting agenda here tonight. And if there's uh, direction uh, one way or another, we can certainly bring back the necessary ordinance amendment to uh, codify the 7 o'clock start time for common council meetings on a moving forward basis. Uh, from an implementation standpoint, this would likely occur after our May meeting uh, if we were to formally switch the meeting times to an earlier start time. I will note the common council is the one board uh, that meets at 730. All other boards, commissions, and committees of the city uh, meet at 7 o'clock or earlier than 7 o'clock. So the common council is the one public body that meets at 7.30 here in Mequon. Alderman Piquet. I would simply have a question. Would, would that mean that we would need to start earlier on council meeting nights when we have multiple committees meeting in advance? Or would we be needing to look at the committee um, Agenda, uh, schedules to meet other nights? Um, as it's currently structured, it would likely be necessary to start a half hour earlier. Uh, right now we have public welfare, uh, finance and personnel, and public works typically meeting on the nights where the Common Council meets. Mm -hmm. But over the last uh, six months or so, uh, many of those meetings have been 30 minutes in duration or less, and we've been starting around 6 o'clock. Uh, on, on common council meeting nights. So this might necessitate a 5.30 start time in, in some instances. Uh, I recognize that many of you work here in Maquan. I do not. And I'm fighting traffic getting here on council nights coming from downtown. So personally, I would find this to be a very um, negative development to move uh, committee meetings earlier than 6 o'clock. Um, I also think you need to look at the you just named the three committees that meet prior to council and and there are at least me and i think there may be at least one or two other people that are on more than one of those two committees so you, you you're going to have to take into consideration the fact that you people may have two meetings that need to somehow get scheduled before a council meeting that's going to start at seven o'clock and even if they're half hour long that's you're you're, you're being rather limiting to those count those committee meetings i uh course go along with the majority but I would certainly oppose this change 
Alderman Adams. Often um, we will throw in a sewer board meeting or a utility water utility meeting, and then we move things up to seven when we do that on the same night. Um, I haven't had anyone like from my district or any citizens approach me and say, boy, I wish the meetings were earlier. And I, and I, um, I understand my fellow aldermen's needs and I'm, I like tradition. It's always been 7.30 and I, I'd like to keep it that way. And, and staff is perfectly okay with keeping the 7.30 meeting time. We're, we're just throwing it out for discussion and consideration. Yeah, I would find it a bit of a hardship to move the whole meeting schedule up a half an hour. And I, I agree with Alderman Worth, Worth's point about putting too much pressure on those committee meetings because you're putting them in a really tight box. And I know maybe not in recent history, the last few months, but it, certainly a year or two ago, it wasn't uncommon to have to try and rush through an agenda at a committee meeting to try and keep council on track. And that's really not fair to the the subcommittees to try and rush through their work just to get here on time. It's, um, I mean, who wouldn't want to get out a half hour earlier at, at the end of a long night, but the flip side of that, getting here would be trouble and then keeping those committee meetings too short and not being, having the thoughtful discussion at that stage would be a, a hindrance, I think. Okay. I think we have the feedback we need. Thank you. But it's 7.30. We will now reconvene as the Common Council. And the first item is designation of the official city newspaper. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, invitations to bid were sent to both the News Graphic and CNI North Shore Now. The News Graphic costs were uh, just a bit lower than they were last year. And uh, the News Graphic is more economical than CNI. Therefore, staff recommends that council designate the news graphic as the official newspaper. So move. Second. Motion and a second. Alderman Adams. Um, when I read this, I'm concerned because there's no um, circulation numbers. And I don't know how you can judge these numbers of what's the best deal until you know how many people each publication go to. I would have to, to be able to vote officially, know the circulation and the price per person of what it ends up being. Now, the biggest difference is just in the legal notices, the display ads, and the affidavits are very close. And there are some people that do read this. We might say, oh, we're just fulfilling and, you know, it's usually pretty legal stuff that's dry reading, but in reality, some people read a newspaper, they look at everything, every, every traffic stop, every death notice, every wedding, I mean, they even post those anymore. And, um, you know, we're trying to be a very open government, and the more people that, I just cannot judge the best deal without knowing the circulation to reach the most of our citizens. So I, I would like to get that information before the vote's taken, but um, I'm not going to move to table at this point because I don't know the repercussions, and I'd like to hear what my fellow aldermen have to say. Alderman Bouquet. Well, I think the, the point is that we are bound uh, legally to publish in a, in a yeah. publication uh, our action or upcoming meeting issues. Um, there was a time when the responsibility was to post it on a board on a corner somewhere. Um, and, and that depended on people walking by or, or stopping to, to look at the sign. Uh, I think that the fact that we publish it in a local paper that that we know is received by a number of our citizens meets the legal requirements that we have. Um, so I would not want to see it delayed this evening for, for that purpose. But I do agree with you that perhaps next time around that we make sure we have the, the that we ask that as a, a part of the information that we receive well, I, I agree with what uh, Alderman Pukage just said. I think we ought to be looking at 
more ways to reach more people, circulation may be a good point. Maybe one of the things we ought to look at is should we, what, what is the value, if, is there a value in publishing in both? We don't have to meet the minimum requirement. We ought to be looking for more ways to reach more people, but I don't know that that's appropriate for tonight. I think right now we, we ought to have a, a, a decision and a legal publication. Um, I think that there is a disparity. I also tell you, I, I wish that it also gave a, an analysis of what the estimated difference is between yeah. the costs. I mean, just having the bold per line number doesn't tell me is it going to be the difference between $4,600 and $5,400 or $7,000 or what is the, uh, the differential between the two papers. And I hope that that would be in future uh, uh, memos giving us the decision. But I think we ought to proceed with what's before us and then look at how, what ways do we make the city more accessible to people because I'll tell you as a non-alderman for the last three years it was impossible to find out what you all were considering and it was impossible to find out what the decisions were that you made unless you either showed up here or watched on TV and and the city has to do a better job than that minutes don't show up for a month agendas get put on two day on, on the internet uh, two or three days before a meeting that isn't really uh, once you put yourself in the other shoes, that's not a, a good way to communicate with the public. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. I think that that's, that's a good compromise for tonight because I have a feeling we do need to get the official newspaper in stone. But, and, but my feeling is the Milwaukee Journal, who met North Shore Cornell, has a much bigger circulation. Um, but if, and I would suppose that's public welfare and there's three of you right across from me on public welfare. Um, hopefully you will, and if not, I will ask for you, if nothing else, to look at this simple question. But I agree with John that it would be helpful to look at many ways to get to the public. Besides the newsletter that we did not approve at budget, there's got to be other solutions. Um, so I'm willing to vote for this tonight with the understanding that we will consider maybe both papers later this year or, and or other ways to communicate these things. I'm a strong advocate of communication. I think that um, Alderman Worth brought up a really strong point um, in that if we do select both publications or uh, tonight I, I feel it would be appropriate to, to pick a main one, but again, I agree with Alderman Adams on circulating that back through public welfare and looking to see what we can do um, to publish in both. Getting that information out to the citizens of Macon is critical at this time, uh, especially with the changes going on in town center. Um, being as transparent as we can and as open and communicative as we can as a city is, is critical during this time. So I, I'll vote for one tonight with the hopes that uh, it is an agenda item in the near future on public welfare. Thank you. Alderman Hawkins. I'd just like to comment that uh, the uh, the point that we're voting on, according to the Wisconsin statute, is the uh, body here designated an official city newspaper for publication of the city's legal notices for the ensuing year. And the news graphic obviously has better rates, and so I think that's pretty much what we're uh, going to vote on tonight. So I'm going to vote for the, the news graphic as the official city newspaper for legal notices. Uh, that said, uh, the comments that have been raised about communicating with the public, uh, we should be looking, whether it's through welfare or some other committee, uh, we should, or through the administrator's office, so we should be looking for other ways to communicate um, what we do on a timely basis with the citizens. Thank you. Thank you. I'd move approval of the newscraft. Second. We have a motion and a second already. We already have. Any further discussion? All those in favor, excuse me? Okay. Alderman Adams? We had already had a motion and a second. I, that's what I said. We already have a motion and a second. Okay. okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the news graphic is our official newspaper. Uh, the final item is mayoral and aldermanic appointments to citizen commissions, committees, and boards. Move approval. Move approval. 
Second. Okay, second. We have a motion and a second. You all got uh, the last minute uh, application from Jackson Lindsay. Yes. At your table. I, I know he wants to be appointed as ambassador to Tahiti. <laughs> and, <laughs> but that is not on our agenda tonight. Um, so we have a motion and a second. Move all to those approve. In favor say aye. 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 That was slow. Okay. <laughs> Any opposed? All right. The appointments are approved. We have a quick motion to adjourn. Then. We have a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion and a second to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? We are adjourned. Good deal.